Sometimes winning streaks end on a painful note. A phantom strikeout. No, a phantom foul tip. Is that where's the contact? Oh, give him another chance. And how about at home plate? Outer save. Well, why is that catcher Persinski going after Amarista like that? Umpire Davidson said to Persinski, "Did you get him?" And he said, "Yes." Yeah, so you're out of there, and that's how you lose a very painful game, four to three, to the Cardinals here in St. Louis. As we welcome you to Game Two of this four-game series, the Padres and the St. Louis Cardinals. And a happy Friday night to you with Mark Grant, Dick Kenberg. Please that you've joined us. Uh, it's tough to uh, digest a yeah. game like that. Last night. It was very tough because the Padre Baseball Club did a good job of staying close. And at this venue where it's always tough to win, they kept it close and they got didn't get the call, I should say. And tonight when you have a guy like Tyson Ross on the mound, I think it makes things a little bit easier after a tough loss because Tyson Ross the last five starts have been really, really well out there. It's an interesting matchup. Two pitchers that were both drafted in 2008, Lynn in the first round, Ross in the second round. They're both 27 years of age, and he is on a run of five games. The Padres have won all five. And Tyson Ross has been nailing down pitches left and right, command of the fastball, putting them away with the slider. But when you look at these numbers, 4-0, oh, the opponent's only hitting 218. This is the Night that Tyson Ross needs to continue. And when Darren Balsey says, you know what? I can't tell Tyson Ross anything. I just go out there for the bullpen session in between starts. He is just not skipping a beat. He's making his pitches. Hopefully a good one tonight here in St. Louis. Get this, fans. Uh, Tyson Ross, something like 71% of the time, hitters make contact. That means that 29% of the time, they're swinging and missing. That's the best in the major leagues. Swing and miss ratio is very, very huge. And when Tyson Ross is out there, what does he have a lot of swings and misses on the slider? But don't underestimate his fastball because he gets strikeouts with that number one as well. And Lance Lynn, this is the Little League World Series time, and Lance Lynn back in 99 was on the Brownsburg, Indiana team that made it to the series. He is... Uh, Posting another outstanding record. You know, Dick, over the years, the Redbirds have really had fine pitchers, studs in that rotation. And Lance Lynn, only 27 years old, he's in his third year. He's making his 25th start. What's making him so effective? He's got two types of fastballs, a two-seam fastball and a four-seam fastball. And they both move differently. So the last seven starts, 2.03 ERA. This is going to be a challenge for the Padres hitters. we got two pitchers tonight, at, as advertised, a good old-fashioned pitchers duel on the banks of the Mississippi. I'm pretty excited. All right. One of those two losses to Tyson Ross, who beat him 3-1 to one at Petco Park three weeks ago. So we're set to go. Pick the stick coming up. Who will spark the offense? Well, Mark Grant is on the top of the leaderboard. I wonder if he'll pick Seth Smith tonight. Hmm.
Welcome back to St. Louis Game 2 series against the Cardinals as the Padres try and even things up with Tyson Ross on the mound. They snapped their five-game victory win last night with that controversial call at home. And because it was viewed by instant replay, Buddy Black didn't get much of an explanation afterwards. But we talked to him, and here's what he saw on that out at home. You saw their catcher go back and try to tag our runner because he knew he missed him. You saw our player react knowing that he wasn't tagged. So you saw two major league players, two experienced major league players react to a play that they both knew that there wasn't a tag. That's what's frustrating to us. Two key plays, uh, foul tip and play at home plate. You know, we battled back. You know, we had bases loaded right at the end and you know, we had another chance to do something, and we, we couldn't get it through. But, you know, sometimes the calls are going to go your way. Other times the call, the call aren't, you know. So that's the way the game is. If we didn't have any replay, nobody would even argue that. That's your Geico quote of the game. In talking to Buddy today, he said, hey, my guys were frustrated and upset the way that game ended yesterday, hoping they can channel that into some positive energy today. Hoping to restart the win streak. Can they do it with Tyson Ross on the mound? He's been stellar as of late. We have first pitch coming up from Bush Stadium on Fox Sports San Diego. As this game about to begin, the Padres lineup tonight brought to you by Toyota. Will Venable to lead it off with Tommy Medica in the number two slot. Seth Smith, the leading hitter, will bat third. Jed Jerko in the cleanup position. Reimer Liriano, four RBIs in four games. That's happened only one other time. A rookie, four for four. Gus Money Grandal a couple of years ago. Rene Rivera, Alexi Amarista will hit seven. Had three hits last night. Jace Peterson gets his first start since being recalled from El Paso. Tyson Ross on the mound. And for the Redbirds, they get a good young right-hander into his third year of the big leagues, 27-year-old Lance Lynn. He's aggressive with the fastball. He's got two types of fastballs. We can get into that a little bit. He pounds the zone with his sinker. He also throws a curveball, slider, and very rarely a changeup. As soon as that first pitch is made, then the game is under control of the umpires. Prior to that, the home club can delay it, but it's not running that hard. Forecast is for showers tonight, tomorrow, and uh, heavier showers on Sunday. Hope they stay away. Will Venable digs in. Here we go. First pitch of the game is in there for a strike from 
The 27 year old Lance Lynn. Top draft pick 39th. Supplemental first round pick of the Cardinals. Six years ago. Foul back out of play. Venable against Lynn. Has had some success. Four for ten. The four hits include a double. And a home run. You know, usually in the game, Dick, as we go on, we see the arsenal of pitchers and what they're throwing. It'll be interesting to see if Lance Lynn is fastball heavy tonight against the Padres. That ball in the dirt. Breaking pitch, curveball. Just a light shower. Temperature right at 80 degrees. It hit 87 in St. Louis today. Low expected at 65. Actually, for August, fairly low humidity. It's been quite pleasant. Deep drive foul down the left field side. Calling the balls and strikes tonight, John Tompain, Bill Wilkie at first, James Hoy at second, and Bob Davidson at third. Who's at third? I believe that's Mr. Davidson. Oh, okay. Just checking. Tough night for him. I mean, they have pride too. They, sure. They go back and see the replays and know they've made a mistake. Absolutely. Inside, two and two. Venable, then Tommy Medica he had quite a batting practice. He put on a show, Medica did tonight. Then Seth Smith in the first. Ground ball right side. A couple of big hops to the rookie Wong. One away. Let's check on the Cardinal defense tonight, brought to you by Honda. Behind Lynn in the outfield. Holiday in left, Jay in center, and Robinson in right. Carpenter and Peralta on the left side. Wong, the rookie from Hawaii at second base. Matt Adams, their leading hitter at first. And A.J. Brzezinski acquired from the Red Sox. Red Sox uh, cut him at midseason and with the injury to Yadier Molina, perfect fit for this Cardinal team that needed a second catcher. Medica takes strike one. Talk about good uh, selection in the draft. Medica was the 14th round pick of the Padres four years ago out of Santa Clara. Foul ball watch out that one skipping over the dugout of the Padres on the third base side into the crowd. They've come prepared. Bumper shoots are out. One and two. Going to keep an eye on the velocity from Lance Lynn as well. 93 on that fastball. He's been uh, touching 95, 96 at times. Probably living around there, 93. His 25th start of the year. And he gets Medica swinging. Two away. Well, our keys to the game are brought to you by the Honda dealers of San Diego County. And the first one is time up Tyson. Hopefully Tyson Ross can go after these Cardinals and win game two, take him deep into the ball game and get to the Cardinals bullpen early. We talked about that last night. They're 19th in Major League Baseball, the Redbirds in that bullpen with an ERA around 3.60. Padres, number one in Major League Baseball. And their heralded closer, Trevor Rosenthal, last night mm -hmm. did quite a dance to get out of that ninth inning, and gave up a run and three hits and two walks. So five base runners and the Padres got only one home and the four three loss. So they're convinced that Amarista scored as well. But that's it. past history now. Well here's a battle of rebels. Old Miss Smith preceded Lance Lynn to Oxford. Mississippi. Hitting 291. It's a natural uh, step for Smith, who grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, mm -hmm. to go to Ole Miss. But for Lance Lynn from Brownsburg, Indiana, down to Ole Miss, it's kind of an oh. interesting uh, matriculation. Didn't want to be a Hoosier, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Their Maybe program is good now, though. Yeah. They got a very good baseball program. Foul back. Good cut. Arizona's in Miami tonight. Milwaukee plays in Los Angeles and the Phils 
visit San Francisco for the weekend. No shift being used on Smith. Two and two. Nice easy 93 mile an hour mm -hmm. fastball. Here's the National League West as we start tonight. The Giants five and a half back of the Dodgers. The Padres 11 and a half. Then Arizona and Colorado. Padres will go to Arizona on this road trip. Up the middle. Shortstop Peralta. Underhands it across and it's a one two three inning for Lance Lynn. Tyson Ross and he make it 11 straight games six innings allowing two runs or less. What an athlete. Right three. Struck him out. A major league shutout. He has been outstanding. Tyson Ross last five starts. The Padres have won all five. He 4 and 0. Oh. And here's the lineup. Mike Matheny is sending out against Ross tonight. Matt Carpenter, he's a run machine, led the league last year, and he's right up there again this year. Good looking rookie Colton Wong at second, then Matt Holiday and Matt Adams, the power in the middle of the lineup. Johnny Peralta, two run home run last night, is 16th for the Cardinals. A.J. Brzezinski will bat sixth. John Jay, the pinch hit, two run double. The game winner in the 4 3 win for the Redbirds last night. Shane Robinson in right, and Lance Lynn, the pitcher. Well, Tyson Ross and Scatter, of course, he is in some type of groove, as Dick just mentioned. Hey, he keeps the team in the game. You go over his ledger for the whole season. You know, a couple of guys have some blips on the radar where it's really not what they're asking for or looking for. But Tyson overall has been keeping them in the game. Strikes early and balls late. Expand that strike zone. Get ahead of these Cardinal hitters. Matt Carpenter leads it off. Carpenter, Wong, and Holiday. And he takes ball one. It's quite a remarkable transformation for Tyson Ross when you look at his major league record prior to this season. He has totally matured at age 27 baseball terms prior to this year. His his record was. Uh, well you wonder how he's going to stay in the big leagues. And then this year he's 111 and lost 10. His ERA is low. His batting average against low. He's among the leaders in strikeouts. That's a strike. Two and one. Prior to this season, Tyson Ross, as you look at Mike Matheny, Tyson Ross's record: nine wins and 26 losses. <laughs> Unbelievable. Three and one. It's amazing just what different pitching coaches pick up on and look at. And he's given full credit to Darren Balsley in finding his game. Don't want to walk Carpenter to start things. He is two for two in his brief meetings against Tyson Ross. And Ross loses him. All the pitches inside. Only one for a strike. So the leadoff man on with a walk. The Padres defense brought to you by 
the Aramco group tonight with Smith in left, Venable in center, and Reimer Liriano in right field. Chase Peterson gets his first start since being recalled with the injury to Everest Cabrera. Amarista and Jerko up the middle. Medic at first base and Rene Rivero behind the plate for Ross. Aaron Ball's lead. Everyone raves about his ability to pick up the little small details in a pitching motion and improve. Someone just with a few, a phrase or a few words. Not over coaching, but he's always right on. And he lives and dies with each and every pitch from the starters and relievers alike. Another pitch low and inside. So that's five in a row, all in about the same spot to start the game. And it looked like a slider as well from Tyson Ross. Remember, he'll throw that at any time. And another ball. So first seven pitches, six of them out of the strike zone. Rene Rivera. Puts a halt to that right now, going out to say something to Tyson to try to get him on course. Sometimes, you know, talking to Tyson, sometimes he uh, it's an upper body issue to where the hips kind of fly open a little bit too soon. The front of the upper half of his body kind of doesn't go out in front with the shoulders, opens up a little bit too quickly, and then therefore missing out of the strike zone. It gets kind of complicated. Well, the visit pays off in a strike, two and one. Fastball at 94. Yeah, I think Tyson's been around a long time to where even like a little drizzle here in the conditions here in St. Louis really shouldn't play a factor. In fact, the rain has stopped. In the dirt, three and one. A scuffling a touch here at the start. Five pitch walk to Carpenter and now behind three and one to Wong. When you look at this Cardinal team and you look at the rankings, when it comes to strikeouts for the hitters, the fewest times they've struck out, so they got a pretty good eye at the plate. They're eighth, middle of the pack as far as walks are concerned. Three and one. Oh, way upstairs. Back to back walks. Ten pitches, eight of them balls to start the game. And that'll bring pitching coach Bolsley to the mound. So he sets the table. For the big guys, Holiday and Adams coming up next. Well, a couple of things here. One is, believe me, Tyson's trying to do everything he can to get his mechanics in order to try to start pounding the strike zone on the corners. Now, Darren has told me before that the last thing he wants to do is throw mechanical issues out there to the pitcher because he doesn't want him to start thinking about his delivery. Tyson has proven over the course of time he feels comfortable in the windup. He feels comfortable in the stretch. I think early on here he just doesn't have that release point down. He's got to find it. And another thing, it takes one pitch, right, Dick? We've talked about this before. One quality pitch here in this situation to get two outs. That's the way you have to think when you're a pitcher. Matt Holliday has had his struggles against Padre pitching this year. He's one for 14. But lifetime, he's done some damage. Padres would love a chance to turn two here. Boy, bounces that in. He is really off, off kilter. This is a fastball, too, I believe. Yep. We've seen Tyson do that. Spiking the fastball in the left handed batter's box against the right handed hitters. Eleven pitches, only two strikes. Slider. Another miss. We talk about the motion of Tyson Ross. He was described with me with his hips kind of flying open a little bit too quickly. And then the arm has to catch up all that way, right, to get up on top. And then that's when you're all out of whack. If it's out of unison on the bottom half, you're going to be out of sync on the top half. And when you try to catch it up, everything's out of whack. Strike. Two and one. The other problem when you start a game wild as Tyson Ross has been, you played umpire becomes accustomed to calling balls, mm -hmm. not strikes. He looks a little herky jerky there, doesn't it? Looks like he's falling off the side a little bit too. Towards the first base side, not having that the bill of that cap going towards home plate. There you go. 97. A little adrenaline on yeah. that fastball. Two and two now to Holiday. 
Our leg kick. Let's watch when the front foot plants. Is everything square? Square. That one seemed to be a little bit more on line. Just like, and once again, I mean, you're, you're splitting hairs, right? That's how fine it is. Like in a golfer's swing, in a batter's swing, in a pitcher's delivery. Two and two, Holiday. And the count full. 95 on the fastball. Believe me, the majority, this is what's amazing about Tyson Ross and the numbers that he's put up this year. You're not going to have 100% feel every time you go out there. If you feel great 10, 12 times, I mean, that's pretty darn good at 35 starts. So you got to battle the rest of the way. Full count to Holiday. No one out, two on. Oh, Man. almost hit him. Bases are loaded. He's thrown only four strikes to the first three hitters, and he's loaded them up for Matt Adams, the first baseman. Well, as we take a look at the sequence of pitches here, spiking the fastball, he tries to get that release point out front with the slider. That's the one pitch where he humped up, tried to challenge Matt Holiday, and then nearly hitting the belt buckle. Kind of spiking that front side and spinning off on that front side towards the first base side, not really having his momentum go towards home plate. Yeah, the Cardinals couldn't ask for more without doing a thing. They've got the bases loaded on three consecutive walks. And Matt Adams is the batter. And he lines it foul. They green light him 3 0. Oh. Somewhat surprising, but Mike Matheny figuring Ross is going to try to aim a strike in there to get a hit on the count. And maybe Adams can crush one. He hit it hard, but out in front. And finally, 0 oh 1 count. Carpenter, Wong, and Holiday aboard on free tickets. Way outside, one and one. Eighteen pitches already. Yeah. And only five of them strikes. He got Adams to chase a curveball or slider. And when he throws a good one, it looks like a strike coming up there. And uh, Adams, after the bouncer, and Rivera just did block it. Came up a little bit with that glove, and thank goodness it hits the umpire, too. I think it got a piece of Renee and the umpire keeping those runners where they're at. Boy. You can tell Tyson, he's he's steaming between the ears right now. He's got to he's got to find a release point, make a good quality pitch here. He's number six in the league in strikeouts. He could use one here, and he doesn't get it. A line drive center field. One run will score. Venable got to the ball in a hurry, so they'll move up 90 feet. It's one nothing St. Louis. Adams with a solid single, and the first of the three walks. Carpenter comes in to score. Still no one out, and the base is full of birds. Well, Adams was aggressive right out of the get-go, turning on that fastball. And you think he wants to drive in these runs? Takes the breaking ball away. He swings at the ball in the dirt. Look nice like short, quick stroke. Just didn't yeah. break. Huh? Didn't have that tight depth to it, that nasty break to it. And for a big guy, looks like a nice short swing for Matt Adams. So Wong goes to third, Holiday to second. Adams joins him at first with the RBI single, and here's Peralta. Socked a two run home run last night off Eric Stoltz to give the St. Louis Cardinals a 2 0 lead in the second. Stoltz then shut him out all the way through the seventh. Another quality start for the veteran lefty. Well, the last thing you want to see is action in the bullpen this early, obviously, but Tim Stauffer, you know, this is one of those situations where he uh, kind of anticipated getting loose. This is against Stoltz last night, deep to left center field over 400 feet. A 2 0 lead. The Padres would tie it with two runs in the sixth inning. And then John Jay's two run pinch double led them to a 4 3 win. Ooh, oh, Rivera had to reach as far as he could to stop that one. And on the follow through, Ross did a complete pirouette. He's just not in rhythm at all. Two balls and a strike. After
for Peralta, A.J. Przinski. Ground ball to third. Juggled at third, so only one. No chance for the double play. Another run scores. It's 2 0. So two of the walks have come around. Credit Peralta with his 52nd RBI. Peterson had trouble fielding it cleanly and making the exchange. And the double yeah. play lost right there. You know, I was almost anticipating Jace Peterson kind of charging it. He kind of played it back, charging it, maybe get the force of the plate. Wasn't the case there. If that ball is hit harder, he's probably going to go to home plate, but kind of caught that one kind of flat footed. One out, first and third. And here's Brzezinski. Swing and a miss. Anthony John Brzezinski. With Boston, was hitting 254, four home runs. Released. Here with the Cardinals, 302. Ground ball foul. So this is uh, being challenged. Ten straight games. It's a remarkable effort by Rod. Ten straight goes at least six innings, allowing two or fewer runs. King Felix at Seattle has gone 16 in a row, but no one else even close. But Ross has already given up two here in the first inning on only one hit. Fly ball shallow and left. Here comes Smith. The long run. Will he get there? Barely does. The throw back to third. And Holiday makes it back safely. That became a very tough play for Smith. Ball kept dying and I, I, dropping you, toward the line. I'll tell you what, Dick. I thought Seth Smith had no chance of getting this. He's going all out, and then at the last second, thank goodness he's got an outfielder's gloves on. He spikes it. He stops the clock. Everybody's got to go back. That, that's a heck of a play for Seth Smith. Nicely done. That looked like a bloop single or oh. double off the bat. So two outs to John Jay, the center fielder. Remember last start in Pittsburgh, Tyson Ross gave up two runs, a two-run shot to Gregory Polanco. Keep it at two right here. Ball one. Holiday still at third. And Adams at first. Check that. It's Peralta at first. Peralta forced Adams on his ground ball to third. Line drive slicing foul. One ball and one strike. Ross about to deliver his 30th pitch of the first inning. You can't defend the base on balls and the three consecutive walks to start the inning have led to two cardinal runs. Two and one. Really falling off on that last pitch. He's got the velocity 95. Yep. He's just not finding the spot in the strike zone. Watchful eye of Balsing. Trying to get out of this first inning without more damage. Swing and a miss two and two. 95 down to the zone with a little bit of movement. I'm sure Tyson when he gets out of this one. He's going to have a, a discussion with Darren Balsley more in depth. It's a tough play, but Jerko is there to flip it quickly for the out. And the Cardinals are held to two. In no sense, that's a victory for Ross, and only two men came home for St. Louis.
be on Fox Sports 1 returns. It's a doubleheader, the Yankees and the Rays in the first game. And then the Padres Cardinals game will be televised on MLB Fox Sports 1. It all begins at 12.30 Pacific time on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. In between innings, Tyson Ross talking with Darren Balsey. I'm sure Darren, I mean, he was watching every little move there. Tyson uh, was scraping at his spikes. He took off his shoes and was digging uh, the dirt out of his spikes, but looking for something that was wrong. And Lance Lynn now pitching with a 2 0 advantage. Faces Jed Jerko, Reimer Liriano, and Rene Rivera. Peralta with a charge. That's four up, four down for Lance Lim. Three of them on ground outs and a strikeout. Reimer Liriano, the batter. 23 year old from the Dominican Republic. Already has his first major league home run. Four games he started since being called up and four runs batted in. Got a key. Infield hit last night to drive in. Fact that tied the game in the sixth inning, 2-2. Two -two. Whoa, oh. man, that's off Lance Lynn and Karam's into right center field, and Liriano with a big turn and will hold. Whoa, that was a bullet back oh. to the mound. I don't know where that got Lynn or whether he got his glove down to deflect it, but. You know it was hard hit when it rolls all the way out to right center field. Wow. Slap shot from the blue line hockey suit coming right back up the box. Looks like a right shin possibly huh. He didn't get the glove down. No. So, need to make sure that Lynn is OK give him some. Practice tosses. He's okay. And you know, every time a pitcher gets hit, like in the foot or the shin or the knee, I think it did. Was it Dizzy Dean who got hit in the toe and it altered his mechanics and he ended his career? Yeah. Somewhat ended his career. And Dizzy Dean pitched for the Cardinals, correct? Exactly. Oh, Dizzy and his brother Daffy. Daffy and Dizzy. <laughs> Back in the 30s. Part of the Hall of Fame is Dizzy Dean. And the Cardinals will induct four more tomorrow. There he is, number 17. Rene Rivera. Rodgers have their first base hit. Liriano, a solid shot. Well, Rene Rivera coming into this season, 321 at bats, had only four home runs. But this year, he's doubled that home run count. They'll run into one now and then. Pitching with a baseball bruise on his shin, Lance Lynn. The effect of that blow uh, may not be seen immediately, but we could tell before the inning's over as Rene Rivera hits that to deep right center field. Jay on the run, and he's able to. Chase it down for the second out. Time now for Rams Trucks Tools of the Trade, and it focuses on remember that plate the plate. Let's take another look. Amarista doing the matrix, getting out of the way. Now AJ Brzezinski and Bud Black talked about it earlier. Bob Davis is like, what? Pointed? What? Hey, hey, AJ, by the way. AJ, did you get him over here? Did you? Oh, okay. Let's bang him anyway. Really? And on the review, the folks in New York couldn't see any evidence to overturn the call out. Rough night for Davidson earlier. He started an inning by giving the hitter for St. Louis, Tony Cruz, an extra swing. He had struck out, but he called it a foul tip, although the replay show he didn't come close to making contact. And Marista pops it up. Left side, foul territory. Carpenter down from third, and that's it for the Padres in the second. Liriano gets a hit. 
the first for San Diego, 2-0 for the Cardinals. Bottom of the second, sat down for an interview with Tyson Ross yesterday and learned an interesting tidbit about him this year. He's tried to go completely organic with the way that he eats. Even said it's really hard when you're on the road, but today got into a cab, went to a restaurant just so he could find some organic food. It's hard when you're on the road and you eat in the clubhouse. Talked to him, there's actually two guys that play for the Tampa Bay Rays. They're completely organic. And when they go on road trips, they go and find the Whole Foods, buy a bunch of chicken and meat that's it's all organic. They can take back and make it the clubhouse. He goes, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm trying to do the best that I can. And with the way he's been pitching recently, hey, maybe we all need to go organic, right, Mark? I'll tell you what, I saw Tyson in the, uh, hey, that's organic right there. Barley and hops, and that's organic. That's natural. That, uh, nachos, wheat, comes from the ground. Anyway, Tyson was in the clubhouse. He was mixing a, a shake with lettuce and celery. Kale yeah. is big tuna. Kale, days, isn't yeah. it? Please. Um, I'm not touching that stuff. No, if you grind it all up, it's no. nice flavor. I'm an iceberg and uh, romaine guy. Leadoff hitter here in the second is Shane Robinson. Seven hits and 50 at bats for Robinson. Got a hit last night. Two and two the count. Shortstop Amarista steps into his throw and there's one away. So it's a big inning for Ross to one get the side out easily and two totally erase the board forget about the first inning. Pretend you're starting all over again. Forget about the two runs on the board. Pitcher Lance Lynn close to an automatic out. He has 41 at bats with two hits. Nice easy 95 mile an hour fastball. That's don't, organic, isn't no, it? No, I don't think so. No, it's processed. I guess there, you know, there's something to all of that. And if you believe it's going to make you healthier and better, then that, that's, that's, that's all that the matters. Thing to right? do. Absolutely. Yeah. In our case, you know, a couple of cheese dogs with lots of onions. And if we think that's healthy, you know, shouldn't it be? Absolutely. It's all in the mind. Mm -hmm. And in the gut. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That's a weak effort by Lynn and the first strikeout and two away now in the second. Well, time now for our player profile brought to you by Arco. Matt Carpenter steps up. 
They got him in the 13th round. A lot of folks had a chance to select Carpenter, and he's been a star, two time All Star, fourth in the National League MVP last year. He led the league in runs scored and hits. What a leadoff man he is, and this year he's up there again. 128 hits already, more than any leadoff hitter, and 76 runs scored. That's a strike. He walked to start the mess in the first inning. Yeah. He walked, Wong walked, Holiday walked, and only one hit netted two runs for St. Louis. A nice little career he's put together, the uh, former Horn Frog, Purple Frog from TCU. Strike two. Willie McGee, he's one of the four to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, the St. Louis Cardinal Hall of Fame across the street at the Cardinals Nation uh, Ballpark Village tomorrow morning. Willie McGee, Jim Edmonds, Marty Marion, Slats Marion, the shortstop of the 40s and 50s, and Mike Shannon are the four to be inducted. It's a good class right there, huh? It surely is. Carpenter grounds it to Medica, the flip to Ross. And it's a one, two, three inning for Tyson Ross. Back on course after two in St. Lou. It's two nothing. All right, Michael and Andy. Jace Peterson will lead off the third inning, his fourth stint coming up to the big club. And he squares, takes ball one. Hungry for hits is Peterson, five for 50. And that comes out at an even 100. One and one. That one loops foul one and two. Looks like Lance Lynn not wasting any time and just pounding fastballs to the left handed hitting Chase Peterson. Remember I said earlier two types of fastballs the two seam action and the four seam fast fastball with like the late life to it. Talk to a lot of Cardinal people they say he can essentially pitch with just a fastball. If need be. Two and two to Peterson, then it'll be Ross, the pitcher, and the top of the order, Will Venable, top of the third inning. Cardinals lead 2 nothing.
rolled to the second baseman Wong. One away. Well, earlier today, a St. Louis Cardinal helmet. That's Aaron Rodgers. What's he doing in St. Louis? Well, the pack is playing the Rams tomorrow. Oh, that's it. So they're here in St. Louis catching a little baseball action. And that as is well. a sweet helmet. I love the Cardinal logo on the helmet <laughs> for Adam Wainwright. Well, he's a former high school football star in his day. All state punter and place kicker and uh, made all region as a wide receiver yeah. Wainwright. We'll see him Sunday on the mound. And Adam is uh, very much into fantasy football. Wayno's world is his team and he uh, he donates money to uh, charities in the local area. So he does he does good things for St. Louis area. That's great. Well, he's done pretty good job on the mound too. 14 and 7 this year with a 2 3 4 ERA. He just puts together great season after great season. He was sidelined two years ago with a Tommy John came right back and it's as good as ever. You know his league that he's put together that fantasy football league. Ross lifts that one high and foul to the right. They've raised over two million dollars the last two years for charity. Mm, that's great. Yeah he's a good one on and off the field. Low strike, two and two. By the way, Lance Lynn, he's 36 and four when he is staked to a two run lead. That's pretty darn good. Padres then have some serious work to accomplish tonight, then, trailing two nothing early. And taking strike three is Tyson Ross. Second strikeout for Lynn. And to the top of the order we go. There's that fastball, even though it was Tyson Ross, the pitcher, located fastball down and away for Seamer. Got him looking. Drop it to second base to Venable to open the ball game. I was taking my walk today and went over to the uh, arch. And you folks, when you come to St. Louis, and some of you might want to wait in line, I didn't wait in line to ride the sled up to the very top. But if you want to experience it's free walk directly underneath that arch and look up. Unreal. Over 600 feet stainless steel reflecting the sun and colors and it just seems like it's 2000 feet above your head. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's quite a structure quite a sight. In for a strike going to have you been up in that day. I have been. Yeah. And this, you know, it's a little sled ride that takes you up there. It's about 12. You can see the observation windows up there, and that's about. I think you go up from both sides. There's a sled that goes from each side. Uh, you're not getting me up in that thing. When I was young, like 10 years old, my family, uh, mom and dad, and my sisters took a trip down here for a family vacation. Yeah, when you're eight, 10 years old, you don't care. No, you like doing yeah. things like that. No, no chance. I'd rather go organic than go up in that. <laughs> well, you are serious. Fouled at the plate. The great Finnish architect, Yero Saranen. That's his design. He also uh, responsible for Dulles Air Force, the uh, airport, the uh, terminal in Washington, D.C. It's just such a remarkable architectural accomplishment. I mean, at the very end, they had to find the, the final curb piece, the yeah. top, didn't they? And yeah. make sure it fit. <laughs> Imagine if it was a, uh, a few feet off or a couple inches off. Out of play. Venable stays alive. Two strikes the count. Two outs. Base is empty here in the third. Made of stainless steel. And you, uh, your father was an architect, and uh, he told you something very interesting about the dimensions. Yeah, of it's that. pretty cool. It's called a catenary curve, which means that from base to base, it's the same distance between base to base as it is from the center straight up, which is pretty cool. Low and away. So it's 630 feet tall, and from the base, 630 feet wide. Tallest man made monument in the United States. 
Ground ball right side into the hole goes Wong and scoops and flips it for the out. A one two three inning for Lance Lynn. It's still two nothing. Tyson Ross since the All-Star break, a perfect 4-0 with a brilliant ERA, 174 hitters, 218 is all. Last five starts, five straight San Diego wins. And hopefully Tyson Ross, as this season continues into the middle of August and September, can wind up with 15 plus wins, right? That'd be terrific. Oh, that would be great. Uh, Eric Stoltz with 11 last year was the leading winner for the five years. And he's already logged 11 wins, Tyson. Third inning, it'll be Wong, then Holiday and Adams for St. Louis. Wong walked and scored in the first inning. One and one. Misses inside. Nine home runs for this young man. Fouled away. You know what else I found today? Kind of just walking over to the yard. You found I a quarter on the side. No, there. I found a building, a very interesting building. This is the headquarters where in 1930 they first started producing Tums, the really? antacid. They yeah. produce six billion tablets a year, Tums, and it's walking distance. From the manager's office. I thought I'd see Bud Black over there getting some mad acid <laughs> after what happened last night. Oh, that's a lot of upset stomachs. Upset stomach right there for Wong going down on the slider. Second strikeout. Well, Tyson, lowest ERA this season among the National League pitchers. Fifth best. Sixth best. Kershaw, Cueto, Wainwright. We'll see Sunday. Hamels, Alvarez at Miami, and then Tyson Ross at 2.63. Okay, yeah, well, let's talk about adjustments in Tyson Ross. The one thing, and it's a fine line. I just want to preface that. It's a fine line when it comes to pitching, and Andy Ashby kind of alluded to it earlier. Now, Tyson, sometimes when he was running into trouble, it seems like, you know, his upper body, he doesn't really get the good, you know, bend at the waist you know, like a lot of pitchers do, right? He kind of stands kind of straight up. And now maybe, just maybe, just a little bit more, he's kind of just staying on the ball longer. And I'm not saying this is what Darren Balls are telling me. It's just a look after seeing him pitch. And just a little bit longer on the ball and staying over the ball a little bit more and being extended a little bit more on that ball rather than cutting it short. That could be one of the reasons. Long legged, six feet, five inches tall, throwing downhill ahead of Holiday, two strikes. Fouled at the plate. You know, because there are pitchers, Dick, and you know this, you've seen guys when they release the ball, you know, they're, they're bent over at the waist and you, you can almost see their yeah. name and number Think of on their Tom back. Seaver. Think exactly. of Exactly. 
And, and, and Tyson, you know, when his full follow through, he's somewhat erect still to where he's up. And, you know, it's mostly just arm out in front and not really the upper half of the body. Ground ball, one big hop to Peterson at third. Throws across in time. And a couple of outs here in the Cardinal third. As we take time out for the Saquon Casino Daycation stat of the game, National League leaders most strikeouts. Ian Kennedy, three more than Ross. As the Padres have two representatives on that list, we're going to see probably Grinke, Kershaw, hopefully not both. After this series, the Padres off day Monday and then three in Los Angeles. Steven Strasburg, the former Aztec, on the top of the list with 194. Matt Adams the only hit for the Cardinals in the game but it came with the bases loaded all on walks singled sharply to center field in the first inning and no one on the left side and he punches the ball there Seth Smith will come in Adams will turn and hold he's two for two he beats the shift. Well, I don't know whether that was by design. Or just trying to make contact. You know, it looked like a nice, easy swing. Definitely hitting down on that baseball. In Big City, talk about beating the shift. Big City, Matt Adams aboard with a single. There's a nice column uh, produced every week beyond column mm -hmm. baseball and all the little statistics that. Become unraveled and uh, make some sense, but in terms of shifts, as you look at Johnny Peralta, most home runs by a shortstop in a season, Edgar Renteria with 16. He now has hit 16. And uh, so did Daryl Spencer back in 1960. So 16 is the most hit by a Cardinal shortstop. Anyway, the point was that the shifts already this year are a couple 3,000 ahead of the whole season a year ago. Yep. So it is in vogue. And Adam's able to beat it. Two strikes on Peralta. Adams had a couple of hits last night. Peralta stays alive. You know, space is loaded. He grounded into a fielder's choice to knock in the second run in the first inning. You know, we can always uh, make assumptions, and when you look at mechanics and stuff, but I wish I was a fly on the wall in that dugout so I could just go, Psst. hey, Darren Balsley, what was it you talked to Tyson yeah. Ross about? Be nice if we could mic him. Yeah. He might go for that. Two strike pitch. Line to right field and Ryan Luriano plays it on a hop. And it's first and third with two outs here in the third as Adams and Peralta with base hits. Luriano trying to show off that arm of his, fired all the way to third on a couple of hops. Yeah, Adams going the opposite way. Johnny Peralta is going with this pitch elevated and not trying to pull it. See how he gets it's easier for that hitter to extend the barrel of that bat when it's up around the belt buckle or that 27 on the jersey. You know, if that pitch is down, it's probably a ground ball on the right side. Liriano shows off that gun, a yeah, one hopper. Yeah, a little more than that, but you can see that uh, he does have a big league arm. First and third, 2 nothing Cardinals. AJ Przinski steps up. Anthony John Przinski. Wide to left the first time. Remember the good catch made by Smith. Krasinski, now that he's uh, in both the American and National League, has managed to play in every major league park but one. He's yet to play at City Field, home of the Mets. Good block by Rivera. Did you ever count how many different baseball parts you pitched in during your career, minor you know and major leagues? I haven't, but that'd be uh, that'd be kind of interesting yeah. to go back and see. 
all the way from your rookie right, year. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Boy, the minor leagues, the, the kids in the minor leagues these days don't know how good they've got it. They've got some beautiful minor league ballparks out don't there. Don't they? Don't they? Ground ball to short. Amarista will take it to the bag himself. And a couple of singles and nothing else from the Cardinals in the third. We've completed 3 2 nothing for the home side. From the Cardinal Nation, Fox Sports San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Petco, the power of together, and by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Look at the ballpark village, a huge setup just over the left center field fence. Look at that uh, venue. It's great. Like a Astrodome there. There must be 50 bars going. <laughs> I took a walk through there this afternoon and I was impressed. Very, very they say it's wall to wall people there at game time. I'll bet. Big screen TV. Yeah. Great ambiance. Look at that. They're watching the game. Those that uh, perhaps thought it was going to rain a little more, able to watch it. And it's like a, a Las Vegas casino. Yeah. It isn't one, but that's you get that impression with so many TV sets. Very nice. Padres in the fourth. Tommy Medica will start it. Then Seth Smith and Jed Jerko. They need a couple of runs to tie here. Our Medica own, struck out the first time. Sorry about that, Dick. Our own Chris Button is going to uh, go out to the Cardinals Nation, where we just looked in and uh, give us a report. Next inning. Foul ball. One hit for the Padres through the first three innings off Lance Lynn. That was the shot by Liriano off Lance Lynn's shin. Michael Lance Lynn to be sure. 6 5 and 240. That was the four seam fastball up out of the zone against Medica. He likes the high fastball and sometimes they'll tease him by climbing the ladder. Let's yeah. see what happens here. Foul tip, strike three. Second time Medica's gone down swinging. Three strikeouts for Lynn. Uh, Dick, you just called it. He did, in fact, go up the ladder. Up and outer, quadrant of the strike zone. Tipped and held on to by A.J. Pierzynski. Seth Smith grounded to short his first at bat. Looks as if it's uh, another sellout here last night on a Thursday night. 45,399. 39th sellout of the season. Getting into the World Series will do that. Yep. 
Last 20 road games. Smith. At a 407 pace. One and one. You know it's. Around baseball. Other cities don't realize. How the San Diego Padres geographically. In terms of their fan base are pinched. Yep. Line drive beats the shift. That ball is fair just as he hit one last night into that same spot and Smith is on his way to second. With a one out double. We say that about the Padres as you look at it again Smith takes that outside pitch and rifles it for two. He's done that many times. We know the power of Seth Smith. You know, he's the best hitter on the team right now when you look at his average but using the whole field. That's the main thing about Seth. Great command of the strike zone just fair about a foot or so. For the double. Actually a ground rule double that hit the stands and kicked back out. Last night he actually took a piece of chalk on the inside part of the foul line on the double. This one is fair by a couple of feet. So a chance for the Padres to get on the board trailing two nothing. Jed Jerko grounded to short his first time. Fiftieth pitch coming up from Lynn. Padres trailed two nothing early last night. Finally caught the Cardinals with two in the top of the sixth. Here in the fourth, hoping to get one or more outside. But just to complete that thought, the Padres geographically have two major league teams immediately to the north: ocean on one side, desert on the other. The border to the south. We were in the elevator last night after the game with some Cardinal fans. Where'd you come from? Springfield. How far? Three and a half hours yep. staying in the hotel. It becomes a Cardinal nation that fans will drive five, six, seven, eight hours to see a game. They'll stay in St. Louis yep. overnight. Make uh, a weekend of it with yeah. the family during the summer. So their fan base, and of course they originally were the westernmost major league team. Is enormous. Absolutely. Up in the central Illinois, probably all of Missouri, then you got the Royals to the west. Foul tip by Jerko on a 94 mile an hour fastball. Two and two. Into Kentucky. Even Tennessee, I would think, right? But back to San Diego, even though geographically more provincial, most of any major league team, when the Padres. Get in the playoffs, and they are a mm -hmm. World Series threat. They're going to be selling out. That's going to happen someday. I just hope we're around to Absolutely. share it. Two and two. Another foul. He just missed that one. Eight states border the Show Me State, which is Missouri. Yeah, they draw from Kansas and Oklahoma and to the north of what we got Dakota, Iowa, Iowa, Illinois. Indiana's close enough. A lot of yeah. Cardinal fans there. Minnesota. And Jerko's worked the count full, three and two. One out here in the fourth. The Padres. Have a man in scoring position for the first time on a one out double by Seth Smith. In the first three ball count for right hander Lance Lynn. Jerko hits that one a ton. It's deep to left, but Holiday is there to make the catch. Oh, that ball had a lot of top spin. He crushed it. But right to the left fielder for the second out. Off the bat, it looked as if it had a chance, but didn't get that underspin to get a long ride. Well, we saw the double. Watch the ball on Phantom Cam off the bat of Seth Smith. I love this. Look at that ball. Compressing just a little bit. Taking it the other way. That's on the sweet spot there. Pretty swing from Seth Smith for the ground rule double. And Turco unlucky not to have driven in a run. He really belted that pitch, but 
Here's Liriano singled his first time. A line shot low through the box that hit Lynn. Ball one. Liriano in batting practice showing his power. There's a, a grassy backdrop. The hitter's backdrop here is a is a grassy land. He hit one more than halfway up the lawn. It's 4 400 to straight away yeah. about 450 feet. Wow. Inside to an O. And of course his first home run as a big leaguer in Petco Park. Was a giant shot. 427 feet. On Wednesday night. Three and oh. Just to remind you he got one inside against. The Colorado Rockies and drove it right through the window into the restaurant. Knocked over four drinks and three hamburger dishes. <laughs> I, I was just impressed how he got to that baseball, got his hands in, got the fat part of the bat, and kept it fair. Very impressive for Reimer. Three and oh, the count. And he takes a fastball strike. Be nice to pick up a run here, mm -hmm. trailing two nothing. Rene Rivera on deck. Inside ball four. So the Padres have the tying run on as Luriano goes to first. First walk from Lance Lynn. And it brings up Rivera, the 31 year old catcher, wide to right center field his first time. But for Jerko. Line drive, the Adam ball went right at Holiday and left. The Padres would have something really seriously brewing here. Pretty good hitter with runners in scoring position this season, Renee. Two on, two out. Ball one. Well, second hitter in the row, talking about Liriano that Lance Lynn went three balls to. So that could be a a trend. Hopefully Rene Rivera can get something here with two outs and like you said Dick at least get one run across and a three ball count on Jerko a three ball count on Liriano and he goes two and oh to Rivera since we talked mechanics about Tyson Ross there is a mechanical issue with Lance Lynn sometimes he'll kind of sling the ball he'll work underneath the ball because it's kind of a lower three quarter arm angle you know kind of sling it work under it and then therefore missing down and away to right handed hitters like he just did to Rene Rivera. So if you're Rivera is Tyson Ross studying the action. He just walked. Liriano and he's two and oh. Sit on a fastball. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. See if you can do some damage and if it's in that one spot. Go to Hacken. if it's not it's not the 2 0 pitch you want to have that 2 0 hack that you want. Let it go. There you go. See, even though that was a strike, that's a pitcher strike. Yes, it was. Not much that Rene Rivera could do with that pitch. So hey, that's fine. If that ball's a foot in right. over the plate, it's a different game. Mm -hmm. Amarista on deck. So the action pitch, two and one with two on, two out here in the top of the fourth. Same pitch, kept it away. So lots of twos on the board. Two and two the count. Two outs. Two on. Two runs for St. Louis. It's quite a family. Uh, Lance Lynn. He married his sweetheart at Ole Miss and she was an All American softball player. Oh. They can play serious catch at home in the offseason. Yeah. Outside, full count. 
runners will be off with the next one. Yeah, this is where you always hope for the extra base hit. Split the gap down the line somewhere. Lariano off of first base. Matt Adams way off the first base line. And the ground ball to short, charging Peralta. And he gets Rivera. The inning's over. The Padres lead two. The Redbirds lead by two. Ballpark Village right outside Bush Stadium and this is really like the central hub of it all. Down here below me have every kind of bar you could imagine. A piano bar, a western bar in case you wanted to go ride the mechanical bull. Huge TV where you could watch the game. So anything you wanted here, food wise, drink wise. If maybe you didn't want to go to the game and buy a ticket, this is where fans go. It's also a great location where fans want to go after the game. All this part of the new addition that they made. Ballpark Village right outside Bush Stadium this year. Dick and Mark. All right. Thank you Chris and also it houses the St. Louis Cardinals Hall of Fame. So that's another attraction all in that one facility across the left center field walkway outside of Bush Stadium. You know that's the old site the old stamp where uh, old Bush Stadium was and that was vacant for a long long time. So that place right now you talk about putting a bow on top. Uh, they did a nice job here. It really adds the uh, the great venue here in St. Louis. It's really superb. John Jay, Shane Robinson, Lance Lynn against Tyson Ross in the fourth inning. There's a strike, 0 and 2. Part of the Hall of Fame and all the memorabilia. 22 Cardinals are currently in the St. Louis Hall of Fame. And then, as we mentioned, four go in tomorrow. Oh, oh with two strikes, he hits Jay to lead off the fourth inning. So the wildness in the first inning cost him two runs, bases loaded, walks. And now, with two strikes on Jay, Hits him in the right calf. And he missed big time. He wanted that ball down and away, and he yanked that fastball. We've seen that a couple times. Shane Robinson, the right fielder, checking to see whether or not they want him to sacrifice. And Lance Lynn, the pitcher next. So Robinson's probably swinging. Yeah. Leave the sacrificing to the pitcher. Boy, he hits uh, Jay again. <laughs> Otherwise, Jay would be on second base. That ball would have uh, gone to the dugout. That ball it looks like it hit him in the shin. Make him forget about the calf. Bouncing off the <laughs> ground. Boy, really short change that throw. Well, our booth is almost in the second deck here at Bush Stadium, and one of the vendors below us. A little Shakespeare selling, huh? selling his wares. I heard him do a little Shakespeare. Yeah, to beer or not to beer? That was the question, he said. 
There we are, and then we're almost uh, in the next row of the second tier. In the dirt, one and one. Mm. So you got all your ad libs written for the national telecast tomorrow. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just, just going to speak from the heart. Just talk a little baseball with Eric Collins and uh, hopefully talk about a pottery victory tomorrow. All right. Got to get one tonight though first, right? Two nothing Cardinals. Padres will have to come from behind. They came close last night in a four three loss. Tyson Ross, his own worst enemy so far, started the game by walking the first three batters he faced Carpenter, Wong, and Holiday. Cardinals need only one hit to get the two runs. Now he's hit Jay to lead off the fourth. Mm. Wearing the model a little bit, diving back to first base. By the way, in the short time that Shane Robinson has been up here, this being his 39th game, 50 at bats before tonight, he's grounded into three double plays. Tyson Ross trying to make an adjustment and get a grounder right here. Jay goes, ground ball up the middle, and Jerko, no chance there, has to get the out at first. So by sending the runner, they take away the double play. Otherwise, that would have been made to order. Jay on the move. The second base. A good back control too, also by Shane Robinson, hit that ball on the ground. You can see him really make the effort to try to get up on top of that baseball. Oh, too bad Davidson wasn't the umpire at second. That would have been an out. He could have asked Jed, "Hey, did you get him?" <laughs> oh, we kid. Yeah, we do. So one out to Lance Lynn. Struck out swinging weakly the first time. With one out, beware now. Good base runner like John Jay. You pay no attention, he might just swipe third on you. That's why you have to vary your moves, vary your looks to second base. One look, two look. Hey, sometimes just stare at him and step off. 70 pitches because he needed 32 to get out of the first inning. Weekly hit to the right side. Jerko takes care of business. Two away. And Jay moves to third. And the leadoff hitter, Matt Carpenter, is in the batter's box. And it's time for you to join us by tweeting your photo using hashtag STFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming telecast brought to you by AT&T. Carpenter takes his time to get uh, his pitcher Lynn back in the dugout. Walked and scored in the first, grounded to first baseman Medica the last time. Ball one. With the two tough calls last night, but Black ejected for only the second time this year. And uh, note came through today that Black isn't uh, even in the running for being tossed so far this year. Five is the most. Guess who's leading? Our old friend Rick Red Torres has oh. been tossed five times. Yeah, Rick, Rick, you get fired yeah. up. We know that. And Joe Madden at Tampa five times. Only one manager in all of baseball hasn't been thrown out once. It's kind of surprising who that is. I'll let you think about it. 2 and 0 to Carpenter. 3 and 0 with Colton Wong, the rookie, on deck. 23 challenges. He's been successful more than half the time in overturning the call. And as soon as he stepped out after the, the replay challenge, uh, that's an automatic ejection. You can't uh, argue with New York. Now that might be a pitch around the fourth walk from Tyson Ross. 
So hit batsman and a walk and Cardinals have runners at first and third. So Mike Matheny 20 challenges for the Cardinals skipper five been overturned. He hasn't been very good at it. Is it Bochi who hasn't been ejected? No. Terry Francona. Terry Francona from Cleveland. Yeah. You would think that he's yeah. that spirited guy. And as Bud Black, I said, you only got two. He said, it's hard to get thrown out these days. You know, with the, <laughs> you can't go out and really argue a play at yeah. any base. You got to wait for the umpires to check on the on the challenge and the replay. Wong has walked and struck out. Slider low and in. Hasn't really had that Tyson Ross bite, no. a real tough bite on the no. slider tonight. And getting ahead has been an issue as well for Tyson Ross. Two outs, first and third for the Cardinals. And a ground ball into left field. That'll make it 3 0. John Jay scores. Wong has knocked in his 33rd run, so the leadoff hit batsman becomes another Cardinal run. All three runs by men that were put on base by Tyson Ross. Two on walks and one on the hit batsman. It's just a little flick job the opposite field. Actually, second look, got to it, was elevated. Hit it exactly where he was pitched. And we've seen that a few times. Matt Adams in the third inning. Johnny Peralta in the third inning going the opposite way. So you have to go all the way back to mid June against Seattle to find a game where Ross has allowed more than two runs. He's human. This is one of those days that right from the start hadn't quite have it. Matt Halliday now sends a high drive to the warning path in center, and Venable collects it for the final out. But a hit batsman, a walk, and a single, and the Cardinals now have three. And I've been challenged to take the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge here in St. Louis. I've been challenged by two of my good friends, Andy Strasburg back in San Diego and former right-handed pitcher Andy Ashby, a former friar. So here we go for ALS. And I'm going to extend the challenge to these three people. Bob Brenly, analyst for the Diamondbacks. Tom Brenneman, my man with the Cincinnati Reds. And my partner and good friend, Mr. Dick Enberg. Here we go. Mr. Dolan from the San Diego Padres. Here we go. I see penguins. <laughs> <laughs> that was cold. And I've got no insulation up no, top. You need a, you need some salad up there. It looked there. like Uncle Fester. <laughs> Uncle Fester put a light bulb in my mouth. My goodness. So Dick, uh, the challenge. Spencer did a great yeah, job. He too. got you right on the top of the pate there, huh? 
and nice and slow oh. to make you suffer. Thanks, Spence. A job well done. And Marista leads off the Padre fifth inning. We've got another seven angles of this. So <laughs> you, you don't have to shower for a week. Oh. Well, when you called and said you weren't down in the lobby, you had to run back to the room and shower. I didn't know what you meant. Now I do. That's the luxury of being here in St. Louis, the hotel right across the street yes. from the ball yard. Nice. One and two to Amarista. Fouled out the first time. It was three for four last night. Swing and a miss. And that's the fourth strikeout for Lance Lynn. Wait, no, wait a minute. One and two. Scoreboard had him with two strikes, so he's still alive. And now strike three. Unfortunately, the previous call was a portent of another Lance Lynn punch out. So, Dick, what about the challenge? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fully in support of Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. I mean, we need to find a cure for that yeah. disease. It's a terrible, terrible disease and it strikes so many young men. And uh, I certainly will donate. Can I can I kind of buy my way out? Uh, of You can else? donate. That'd be great. It, it, that's awesome. Yeah, go to the Enberg Charitable Trust and find a way to contribute. Much appreciated. And everybody can get involved, right? Raising awareness and donating if you can for ALS. Jace Peterson grounded the second his first time. I had a friend years ago in, in Alpine right down the street from me. He was working out and for a long, long time he said, you know, Mark, my muscles just aren't, you know, is this normal? You know, you're an athlete and you work out all the time and he just uh, was complaining about it. Seen down in the, the weight room down by our house and found out later. ALS and it was one of the worst things I've ever witnessed. Terrible. Peterson check swing foul and it's so ironic that. The American public first became aware of ALS because the iron horse right. Lou Gehrig contracted the disease and it took him down. And they called it Lou Gehrig's disease and still do. And so baseball has had a very big role in uh, the awareness mm -hmm. and caring about a disease that seemed uncommon at the time. Yep. The great Lou Gehrig wasn't the luckiest man alive. Jace Peterson trying to get aboard here for the Padres. They trail now three to nothing. Cardinals getting some help. Wildness from Tyson Ross four walks and a hit batsman and three of those have come around to score and Peterson a base hit off the tip of the glove of Peralta. Uh, Andre's got something. Uh, possibly brewing here in the fifth inning a sharp single from Peterson Peralta almost got it. Oh, I like that swing by Jace Peterson why going the opposite way you know Lance Lynn, he likes to pound the ball down and away. You try to pull that ball. It's a different story. He stays on it. Just out of the reach of Peralta. Very nice. Padres third hit of the night. Smith with a double. Liriano a line single through the box. And now Peterson. Tyson Ross will bat and infield looking for the bunt. Bunts it in the air foul. Kind of poked at that one, right? Got to catch the ball with the barrel of the bat as if there was a glove nailed. On the sweet spot, just yep. catch it. Now Tyson's put the ball in play before. You never know. Show bunt, pull back, butcher boy. Key there, though, is got to hit it on the ground. Or if he splits a gap here, because the outfield playing very, very shallow. Ross has been successful on two sacrifices this year. Report on his young brother Joe. He's tied for the most wins in the Padre minor league system with 10, but tired arm. He's been placed on the minor league DL. What's that, seven days? I think so. 
Yeah, they got a different type of DL system down there in the minor leagues. Two and one now to Ross. Venable, the leadoff man on deck. Peterson goes on a ground ball, base hit, past third. Peterson right on to third base. Yes, sir. He pulled the bat back and with that third baseman Carpenter creeping in, whistled the ball right by him. So first and third for the Padres from the bottom end of the order. <laughs> that ball was smoked. That ball was hit very well. Put your boy back. Let it fly. Boy, he turns on that fastball as well. And you can see cutting down the range. Carpenter at third base. Perfectly executed. So it was a hit and run with Peterson easily making the run to the other corner. And the Padres with their best chance of the night. First man to third. Only one out. Venable up twice. Grounded out to second twice. He is homered off Lynn. And he hits this one deep to right center field. No one's going to catch that. It's a one hopper against the wall running all the way as Tyson Ross from first they'll hold him at third as scoring is Peterson it's a 3 1 game as Venable delivers and second and third with a chance to tie here in the top of the fifth a booming double to right center. Oh, Will Venable not wasting any time that was the perfect swing it was the perfect sound that'll get everybody up in that pottery dugout Lynn two seam fastball elevated outer half. That's pretty. Lynn's been getting the ball up a little bit. Will Venable takes advantage of it. So meeting at the mound as the Padres three consecutive hits after Amarista struck out. Peterson a line single off the shortstop Peralta's glove. Ross with a hit and run single when they were looking for the sacrifice. And Venable driving in the first run of the game for San Diego with that one hop double to right center. Tommy Medica the batter. Infield will play in at the corners back up the middle. And here again Adams look how far off the bag he is at first base. Yep. Figuring that medical pull hitter isn't going to punch one. The opposite field that drastically. Strike one medica has struck out twice. Ground ball to any infielder except Adams will score another run. Ross at third. Venable at second the tying run. I'd like to see Tommy Medica wear out right center field here. Strike two. Well, two times he struck out swinging and he finds himself in a hole 0 and 2. Here in the fifth. Seth Smith on deck. Want something up here. AJ Brzezinski indicated up. Maybe another fastball. Yeah. Oh, well, tip strike three. So they've got his number. Medica pitch out of the strike zone high, and he strikes out again. A repeat of his last strikeout. Only that ball was even higher. So it's up to Seth Smith, and will he get to hit with first base open? Yeah, that's the. Uh, I don't think he's going to get anything right here. No, they're going to walk him intentionally. Well, maybe not. Brzezinski pointed to first base as if to say, let's put him on. This may be, if he wants to swing at a bad pitch, let him. Or maybe uh, he was indicating to Lance Lynn, hey, on a ground ball, hit the right side, make sure you get over there because of Matt Adams playing so far off the bag. Out of play. Smith doubled to left field his last time. They sit with tie it. I think Seth got a mistake right there and wanted to just crush it. Should he keep it going? Clean up hitter Chad Jerko on deck. Second baseman Wong playing shallow right field. One and one. We're all to the shortstop out on the grass, so they're deep. The two outs. 
not the full shift. That's that's a darn good pitch right there. Knee high inner half. So a ball two strikes to Smith. 3 1 the Cardinals lead but the Padres with the tying run out at second base. Will Venable. Pitcher Tyson Ross with a base hit over third. High pop up. Second baseman Wong calling. And the Padres manage only one out of three consecutive hits. They lead two more with the halfway mark in St. Louis with the Cardinals leading three to one. All right, gentlemen, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and Matt Adams, two for two, will lead it off for the Cardinals. Cleanup hitter, then Johnny Peralta and A.J. Brzezinski. Drove in a run with a single to center field his first time up. And a shot back to the mound on one hop, and good reaction by Ross using that long left arm and 6 5 frame to deny Adams his third hit. Let's go to Chris Button. Chris, what do you have for us? Well, some unfortunate news for one of the Padres' top prospects, Max Fried, will have to have Tommy John surgery later this month. He started feeling the elbow soreness during sprint training. They shut him down for a little bit. He did pitch in a couple games in the Arizona Rookie League, but the soreness creeped up again. They shut him down again. They were hoping to a second opinion would change things, but unfortunately, the 20-year-old left-hander will have to have Tommy John surgery later in August. Oh, that's terrible news. He was their number one one pick the seventh overall two years ago and he goes to Tommy John. Man we're going to have a 
hospital ward full of Tommy John patients. Yeah, I just hope he bounces back. We've heard stories of guys coming back even stronger. We've heard stories of guys hitting roadblocks along the way. Corey Lubke comes to mind. Peralta drives one deep into the hole. Amarista is able to knock it down, but wouldn't have had a play. And Peralta has his second hit tonight. So you got to hold your breath. You got to hold your pen before you write anything down when the ball is in the general direction of Alexi Amarista. Nice job of getting to this ball, knocking it down. Did not feel it cleanly, but it's always fun to see Alexi go to his right or left. We've seen him make some spectacular plays. Now, if he gloves this and hops up, who knows? We'll never know. What's the latest on Robbie Erlin? We haven't heard anything about his condition. About Robbie. But you think about the young arms in the Padre organization. Filed away by Brzezinski. Lukey, Whelan, Kelly, now Freed, four outstanding potential mm -hmm. talents all under the knife for Tommy John. And it's not just uh, the Padres, the Rockies have been hit hard. Their one two punch in the middle of the lineup to Lewitsky and Gonzalez, both out for the end of the season with surgery. It's part of the game, and St. Louis Cardinals without Yadier Molina. And it's, uh, That's right. It's a big story in the St. Louis paper today with Molina and without Molina. It's pretty dramatic evidence that he is the kingpin in the Cardinal offense and defense. Five hits for the Cardinals, two apiece for Adams and Peralta back to back in the lineup. Brzezinski out on a soft fly ball down the left field line. Smith made a long, long run and catch. Grounded to short his last time. Infield playing Brzezinski to pull. And pull he does foul. Two yeah. and two. Take a look at uh, Jace Peterson, Alexi Amarista on the left side of the infield. Way over. Well, if you're just joining us, a frustrating part of the game as it's progressed was Tyson Ross unable to find the strike zone early. He walked Carpenter, walked Wong, and walked Holiday, the first three men he faced in the first inning, and two of them came around to score on only one hit. And then he gave up another run in the fourth, hit the leadoff man, walked a runner, and with two outs, a single by Wong made it 3 0. The Padres got one back here in the top of the fifth. Just not as sharp as he's been, uh, Tyson Ross. And yet, just a 3 1 game. Mm -hmm. Keeping him in the game, right? Two and two to the Cardinal catcher. One hopper up the middle, stabbed by Amarista. Will make it the second in time, but not the double play. Jerko, because they were playing Krasinski to pull, was way away from the bag at second, so he just couldn't get there in time for. A 6 4 3. So Amarista goes to the bag himself and gets the four. Safe at first is Brzezinski. That ball was hit sharply. And once again, even though it's hit sharply, it's Tyson Ross hitting his spot and the depth chart or the spray chart indicating where the ball is hit when pitched at a certain area, right? He happened to be right there. John Jay grounded out, was hit by a pitch. Behind on the count 0 and 2 the last time, and Ross hit him, and that cost San Diego and Tyson as Jay came around on a couple of ground outs and a single to make it a three run lead for St. Louis. Big pinch hit last night, bases loaded double to score two runs. And he hits him again. Didn't make much of an effort to get out of the way, but nevertheless. So that's four walks and two hit batsmen for Tyson Ross. Time now for the Cholula flamethrower. Tyson Ross, the big right hander. 97 miles an hour tonight out of the hand from Tyson Ross on the fastball. That's hot. Shane Robinson has grounded out twice. Two on, two out. Here in the Cardinal fifth inning. The 
Russ has allowed only five hits, but he's put six other Cardinals aboard on wildness. Strike one. That's the slider we know and love of Tyson Ross. That one is about 50 feet. That bounce almost on the grass. Brzezinski at second, Jay at first, two out. Slider and a good one. See, that's what I like to see from Tyson Ross. First pitch, nasty slider. Second pitch in the dirt, out in front of home plate. We talked about this game being a game of adjustments. Tyson Ross found it within himself to make that adjustment and answers back with another slider right on the outside corner. Only two strikeouts for Ross. That tells part of the story too. He's been averaging almost a strikeout per inning. Grounded sharply. Nice play by Peterson. The long throw. And he gets him. Oh my. Hang a star on that one. Jerry Coleman would be swinging the star as Jace Peterson takes. A base hit, a double away from Robinson, and then able to throw across, and it's dug out by Medica for the final out in the inning. Brought to you by Saquon. Real friendly and real close. By Jack in the Box. Try Jack's spicy chicken club combo. Just $4.99 plus tax. And by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. Visit us at aramco.biz. Well, Chase Peterson, who has commented that uh, while he's Growing up in the system as a shortstop, he's been used by the big club at second base and at third. Not totally familiar positions, but he makes a Brooks Robinson kind of play there at third to deny the Cardinals at least one, maybe two more runs. Keep it close, three to one, St. Louis, top of the six. Jerko looks at a ball all the way to the screen. Jed's hit in tough luck here in the first two games of this four game series. Last night he lined to center, sharp ground ball to short. Deep fly to center tonight. Uh, he's grounded to short line to left the last time. He's hitting the ball hard, just can't find the, a gap. One and one. 
ninety one pitches. Jace Peterson there in the dugout with a base hit scored the Padre only run and that dazzling defensive play. Well, One he, and two to Jerko. His teammates couldn't get to the top step soon enough, quick enough to congratulate Jace Peterson on that last play. That's as good as play you're going to see from the third baseman. A mm -hmm. ball hit that hard off a right handed bat. It's hooking away. It's hooking towards the line. And he stabs it on one bounce. That was spectacular. Barely fair. In fact, when he his follow through carried him into foul territory. Jerko chases there. And the Padres have one out as Jerko goes down swinging. The sixth strikeout for Lance Lynn. Well, let's look at our Bill Howe play of the game again. Jace Peterson, and then almost blindly getting up and firing and a, a throw a little low, but dug out easily by Medica. Shane Robinson's a good runner. Yeah. Our Bill Howe play of the game. Dick, you know, you make a good point. Let's not forget about that pick by Tommy Medica. That was a nice play over at first base as well. And Medica, a player that's learning left field and first base, a natural catcher. Blew out his arm in college and finding a defensive spot by working, 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 and trying to keep that bat in the lineup, although tonight it's been quiet. Liriano off the fist to third baseman Carpenter. And two quick outs in the top of the sixth inning. Let's go back to Chris Button. Dick, you're wondering about Robbie Erlin. Found out some information. Right now he's rehabbing in San Antonio. He's made three starts so far with a 2.45 ERA, 10 strikeouts, and three walks. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. That's the good news that uh, Erlin on the comeback trail. And of course, Andrew Kashner. Has had another rehab start and is expected to start again this weekend. And hopefully he'll be back with the big club in time for the next homestand that opens against the Dodgers. Rivera fouls it back after this 10 game trip four here in St. Louis three in L.A. three in Arizona. The Padres come home to host the Dodgers. Milwaukee first and then the Dodgers and Arizona for four and we'll be in September already. Ninety seven pitches for Lynn. Rivera has fly to center and grounded to short. The 3 1 lead, Lance Lynn in position to win his 13th. Ground ball off the glove of Carpenter down the left field corner, and Rivera chugs his way around first. He's into second base with a double, two outs here in the sixth inning, and a chance for the Padres to cut into that two run Cardinal lead. Oh, Lance Lynn getting in the kitchen of Reimer Liriano. Tries to go inside here. He wanted it away. And this underlines all the more how great the play Jace Peterson made in the last inning. That was a tougher chance than Carpenter yep. had. Now Rivera with a two out double and Amaristo for two tonight, the hitter. Next pitch, 100th from Lynn. Third double by the Padres tonight. Half of their six hits. Out hitting the Cardinals six to five, but those extra base runners, walks and hit batsmen have produced the three St. Louis runs. Interesting play, the bunt, and Imarist is out with a runner in scoring position. You want him to be swinging the bat, don't you? Instead, the inning is over. Still 3 1.
bases loaded on walks. Matt Adams gave the Cardinals a one nothing lead. They got another on a ground out. Two runs on just one hit because of the three walks. And after a hit batsman. John Jay he comes in on long single three nothing the Padres get one back Tyson Ross contributing with a bat a hit and run and a double to right center off the bat of Will Venable the Padres scored their only run three one they've had plenty of opportunities but that's their only run for Tyson Ross who is going to try to get his six innings again tonight our Harris game summary and the Cardinals lead three one after five and a half. Well, Tyson Ross has made an adjustment. There you see the frame, five frames, five hits, three runs, and the walks, the four walks, only two strikeouts. Very uncharacteristic yeah. of a, the strikeouts at least. There's been games when Tyson has had, you know, four or five walks. But still, Cardinals with a three to one lead only. Lance Lynn has passed the 100 pitch mark. We'll see whether or not he'll stay in. As you've said, the, the start of the telecast, key to the game, get in that bullpen yep. of the Cardinals. The hugs and all that yeah. Lynn has completed his night's work. And indeed he has because the Cardinals will use a pinch hitter to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. Daniel Descalzo. He comes out swinging. Descalzo. 204 average. Entered the game last night to sacrifice, took four pitches and walked. That helped to load the bases for John Jay's double that became the deciding blow in a 4 3 win. Good utility, man. Left handed hitter. Drives that one to right center. Venable has it tucked away for the first down. And time now for our San Diego. Fans of the game. Yeah, you got to bring your umbrella along with your glove when you come to a game here in St. Louis to take a look at the Doppler. You never know when rain is going to come. That gentleman came prepared. Very cute. And somewhere back there, there's a uh, Andre fan hiding somewhere. We're in the Cardinal hat. They have the, that, that boy with the glasses on. Cardinal on the head. Hey. But Padre near the heart with the shirt. You gotta yes, love that. There you go. It's all about the anatomy. Hey Tyson, the last 21 hitters, 18 to 21, first pitch strikes. Matt Carpenter has walked twice and grounded out. A disastrous start for Ross. Walked Carpenter, walked Wong, and walked Holiday in the first inning. And gave up a single to Adams. So first four men all on base a run home, but he settled since, gave up another run in the first on a fielder's choice, and then a hit batsman came around to score on him in the fourth. But considering the free passes, it's a good outing for Tyson yep. Rose. I mean, there are a lot of pitches that three runs, you're gonna win you a game. Absolutely. And the Padres got three more shots at it here in St. Louis. And once again, I think it's the uh Maturation process of Tyson Ross that we've seen since being a Padre getting into trouble and making that adjustment Taking him deep into the game like in the sixth inning here making the big pitch when he really needs to Two and two now to Carpenter true to form takes a lot of pitches every at bat more than any National League hitter Off Third, and that's slicing toward the crowd and will be out of the reach of Peterson. Decent amount of foul territory here at Bush Stadium. You would des describe this ballpark as a fair park, but in watching the games and batting practice, I think it's not a bad pitcher's park. Ball, at least these two nights, has not mm -hmm. carried that well. A lot of Outfield. In part may be the reason that the Cardinals are last in the National League in home runs with only 80. It's a long run there. Whoops, he has to get through. Bob Davidson gets in the way again. Can he do anything right? <laughs> line drive Carpenter right at Liriano. Didn't have to move. So two line outs. Lynn, Lynn's a pinch hitter Descalzo. 
And then Carpenter for the first two outs. Tonight on Fox Sports San Diego, catch an all new episode of Padres POV. This week, we get to know Jan Hervis Solarte over lunch, walk to the park with Tommy Medica, and go behind the scenes in the Fox Sports San Diego broadcast booth with SDS football head coach Rocky Long. All that, much, much more. Padres POV tonight after Padres Live. It's a terrific show. They do a fantastic job of editing and setting up uh, the various storylines. Get to know the Padres better. Inside, Wong has an RBI single, a walk, and a strikeout. John Solarte uh, still nursing that sore side, the oblique muscle that he pulled the uh, last game against the Colorado Rockies at Petco. High fly ball. This one's hit deep. Venable goes back. See the ball just. That ball is hit hard. Three hard hit balls, three straight outs in the sixth inning. Perhaps a good omen for the Padres. They need two to tie. The new hurler for the Cardinals, Sam Freeman. Well, Mike Matheny has a lot of left handers. Four left handers in that bullpen Greenwood, Segrist, Choke, Enter Sam Freeman. And we saw this uh, this kid with the splits of 302 lefty. Righty's 233. And the key here is that getting into that bullpen, only trailing by two. St. Louis Cardinals are 19th in Major League Baseball with a 3.6 ERA. And while we have a moment, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres. There's that kid. May not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the written consent. Express written consent. Yes, express. Yeah, <laughs> consent of the San Diego Padres. See, the, the, the shirt is by the heart, right? He's thinking with his head Redbirds, though. But it's all about what's... Right there. You can hide the heart, but you always feel it, huh? Yep. So Sam Freeman takes over for Lance Lynn, who goes six innings, allowed the one run, six hits, three doubles, but only one walk and six strikeouts. Abraham Almonte hitting for Jace Peterson. Get a right handed bat against the left hander Freeman. And we'll have another pinch hitter. For Tyson Ross. Fouled at the plate. So it's. It really is a remarkable effort by Ross. That's a quality start. Mm -hmm. Six innings. Yep. Three runs or less. He continues to give the Padres a chance to win. Up high, two and one. And Monty, who had a big game 
Wednesday against the Rockies. Two outstanding defensive plays and a home run. Two and two. Freeman's got a live arm. Fastball change of slider. 91 to 96 on that fastball. Line to center field. Will that fall? Nope. Into the glove of Jay. It falls. He played him perfectly, didn't he? He's on the shallow side, John Jay. Well, a lot of hard hit balls for outs in this series. Gloves getting in the way. Chris Nelson will bat for Ross. So, but for his wildness, Ross, another outstanding six innings. He allows the three runs are all earned, but they all came in. Two walks and a hit batsman are the runs that scored. Only five hits. Walk four, hit two, and struck out two. 109 pitches for Tyson. He battled. He sure did. One and one to Nelson. Will Venable, who has knocked in the only Padre run with a double on deck. And the Padres unable to get over the three run barrier last night as they lost 4 3. Going to find a way to get some big hits going down the stretch tonight. They've had men in scoring position with three doubles tonight. Just unable to get that one big hit. That ball right center fairly shallow. Jay has both outs here in the seventh inning. Hey, America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, and every game with America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune into America's pregame weekdays at 3 p.m. Pacific only on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your cable and satellite provider, go to Fox Sports 1. Venable, a couple of ground outs to second, and shot a line drive double to right center field to drive in the run in the fifth inning. Trying to bunt his way on. Bunted too hard. Adams takes care of it. That's the second time the Padres have tried to bunt for a base hit unsuccessfully. Stretch half of the seventh at Bush. Still 3-1 St. Louis. Matt Holiday, Matt Adams, Johnny Peralta against the new Padre pitcher, right-hander Blaine Boyer. 
Warriors numbers his 23rd appearance of the season. Only three walks and 20 yeah. strikeouts for him. He's put together a nice little year there. You see the splits, lefties and righties. Righties only 130 off of one last time out against the Rockies, a third of an inning. And it was a strikeout against the Rocks. Chris Nelson stays in the game at third base. He'll stay uh, in the ninth spot of the batting order. You can insert Boyer into the eighth position. Holiday 0 for 2 with a walk. So Matt Holiday is one for the last 16 against Padre pitching, and he's in a little slump overall. 0 for the last 14, dragging his average down to 263. Atlanta has defeated Oakland tonight. Oakland, along with Los Angeles, with the most wins in baseball 73 wins for the A, 73 for the Dodgers, topping the two leagues. So the Angels have to see that score, and they are in Texas in the eighth inning, leading 5 to 1. to play one and two Seattle defeated Detroit seven to two Arizona with a win in Miami three two tonight Tampa Bay shut out the Yankees five nothing Kansas City leading at Minnesota five to three another foul Washington edged Pittsburgh 5 4, and the Mets with a close win, a 3 2 win against the Cubs. So, those are all the other scores. Terrific scoreboard here. They not only give you all the scores, but they have a diagram of the baseball diamonds. So you can see exactly what's happening in the yeah. game. It's seventh inning, where are the runners? And Tracking the runners, huh? Very nice. How's that? I mean, it's big, bold numbers. Yeah. There's not a place in the ballpark you can't read that. Milwaukee, LA, bottom of the first runner at third with Yasiel Puig at the plate. Now yeah. Adrian Gonzalez. Yeah, he just scored. Puig just scored. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Full count now to Holiday. Boy, you uh, bleach that red beard white. He's got a job at Christmas, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he does. Seems to be the popular thing these days. A lot of beards throughout big league baseball. Holiday spoils another. Count remains full. Pat Nishek sporting the beard. It'll be interesting to see if it gets to that point, Mike Matheny. And hopefully it's not the case because you don't want to usually see the closer for the opposition if you're a Padre fan, right? But if it gets to that point, will he go with Nishek? Swing and a miss, strike three, and Holiday's woes continue. Boyer strikes out the first man he faces, and tonight after the game on Fox Sports San Diego, we invite you to watch Padres Live. Mike Pomerantz, Andy Ashby in for Mark Swinney. Scott Miller will break down the Padres new front office. Well, not really break it down, but he'll talk about exactly. it, all the additions right. and what's happening up on Mahogany Row at Petco Park. And the Ashby instructional on slowing down the running game. That's all coming up on Padres Live after the game on Fox Sports San Diego brought to you by Cox. Matt Adams, two for three, knocked in a run with a single in the first inning. Shift is on. Way out in front. Good breaking ball from Blaine Boyer. Three on the right side, a little rover there. Adams beat the shift the last time, yep. punched a single up the third base side. Jed Jerko in shallow right. Yeah, the numbers this year, 11,434 shifts. All of last year, only 8,000. Wow. 
significantly different. Calvin remains one and two. First base coach James Maloney. Got to give him an error on that one. It was not fielded cleanly. Chris Maloney. Stand corrected. Driven to right. Liriano's there. Oh, another hard hit. Line drive out. Two away. That'll bring up Johnny Peralta. Two for three with a ground ball fielder's choice RBI in the first inning. How beautiful is that statuary garden out? Yeah. Was that the left field corner here? It's at the uh, pretty, impre outside? pretty impressive. Was there, I think, nine St. Louis Cardinal greats, including, well, the St. Louis greats, because right. Cool Papa Bell is exactly. there as well. They did a nice job on that, honoring the uh, former great players. And I tried to read each of the plaques today, and it's just the dazzling when you think about what a great hitter Rogers Hornsby mm -hmm. is. Many think the greatest right handed hitter in the history of the game. That in 1924, that 90 years ago, 1924, he hit 420. That's unbelievable. 420. Rogers Hornsby. And when you look at the pictures of Hornsby, he he was powerfully yes, built. Yes, he was. Used that same bat the whole season. That ball's drilled to left field. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like a shooting gallery, but you just sit the ducks out there and the line drives come right to the leather. Seven complete. All right, Mike and Andy will be with you as the uh, top of the eighth inning opens and Sam Freeman still on the hill for St. Louis his second inning Tommy Medica glad that Lance Lynn is gone three times up punched out three times by Lynn high fastballs out of the zone getting to the eager bat of Medica Medica then Smith and Jerko 
Top of the eighth inning. Three to one. Padres out hitting the Cardinals six to five. Light drizzle at the start of the game. We had very light rain and uh, coming down again. Nothing serious. Enough to settle the dust, right? Make the grass greener. Yeah. Two and zero to Medica. Padres need a base runner. Bring that tying run to the plate. I mentioned earlier that uh, Mike Matini has four four left-handers in his bullpen. Sam Freeman being the first one out of the pen tonight. And with Seth Smith on deck, undoubtedly the best Padres hitter. You, know, you think that you might want to see Randy Choate, a veteran left-handed pitcher, but he might save him for a little later if the score gets a little closer, right? Still a little bit of baseball left as Seth waits on deck. Medica, the count three and zero, oh. and a strike three and one. Forty two thousand six hundred sixty two another big crowd here at Bush Stadium St. Louis. Not quite a sellout capacity is over forty five thousand. And foul back. Full count now to Medica. Stays alive. Count it's three and two. Seth Smith, Chad Jerko, Padres with some power due here in the eighth inning. Cardinals have led all the way since scoring two in the first inning. Got him again. Four strikeouts. Well, three's the hat trick. He's now got the. Silver sombrero. Four punch outs for Medica. Long night tonight. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo for you. Tweet your photo to hashtag SD fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast brought to you by AT&T. And Loretta, you got yourself a nice shoulder there. Nice. Here's that Smith, a double in three trips. When Tommy Medico goes back to look at the video of the four strikeouts, he's going to see something that's very apparent. They're mm -hmm. not throwing you strikes, and you're going after that pitch up around the Adams apple. Smith, a double to left field back in the fourth inning with one out. Padres also got a walk from Liriano, but couldn't produce a run against Lance Lim. A pretty good job by Freeman to bail out of a three and O count with Medica. Able to throw four straight strikes and punch him out. Falls behind Smith, three and O. And he walks him. So the Padres have the man on, and that'll bring the tying run to the plate here in the eighth inning. First base runner against Freeman. And well, that know, brings Matheny out of the dugout. You know, usually Pat Neshek is the uh, eighth inning guy, and without him not pitching here in the eighth, there might be Neshek being the closer tonight as Manus is ready to go in that Cardinal bullpen. Seth Manus, who got the win in last night's game, and we'll take a break.
very strong schedule. A lot of really good teams on the road, including teams in our league like Boise State, uh, Nevada, Reno. Uh, we have to play Fresno State. We have to play those guys all on the road. How's everybody responding early on? Well, I mean, we got some young guys that need to get a lot better quick. Uh, but the veterans coming back, we're excited about how they're playing in practice. Yeah, Rocky Long seems very optimistic about the Aztec season upcoming. And you'll be able to get more insights on Padres POV right after Padres Live, the postgame show. A little heavier rain now here at Bush Stadium with one out in the eighth inning. And the new pitcher, Seth Manus. He'll face Jed Jerko, who has grounded the short line to left and struck out tonight. Well, Seth Manus' middle name is ground into double play. And the reason why I say that, last season, 16 grounded into double plays in 62 innings. 11 this year in 61 and a third for the right-hander. Worked the eighth inning last night, a 1-2-3 eighth inning, and then was credited with a win as the... Cardinals scored two in the bottom of the eighth. That's out of play. Smith at first base. Padres down by two. Jerko representing the tying score. Reimer Liriano on deck. Made us got Jerko last night to fly to center field. Oh, right down the middle. Jerko frozen. A couple of strikeouts here in the inning. Manus opens his tour with a cold strike three. And you can see why Manus gets a lot of ground balls. Look at this pitch right here. Outside corner, knee high, little two seam action. If that pitch is over the plate or in, you can see it probably has more dart down action to the right handers. That's a lot of ground balls. Young Liriano has singled and walked, grounded to third as last time. It's something he can square up here and tie the game with one swing. Asking a lot for the rookie in his fifth major league game. Breaking ball in yep. the dirt. Looks like a little slider there, Dick. Down and away out of the zone. 3 1 Cardinals were in the top of the eighth inning. Time running out on San Diego. They have a base runner here, Smith, on a walk. Continues to rain, a light rain. Another ball in the dirt and able to check is Liriano, one and one. Well, tomorrow, Fox National TV, you can follow the Padres and the Cardinals, part of a doubleheader. Jesse Hahn will be on the mound for the Padres against Shelby Miller. You'll be able to hear the commentary of Mark Grant. And we'll be back on Fox Sports San Diego on Sunday. Oh, he just missed that. Got a lot of it way up into the night. Wong called off by Robinson. And that'll do it for the Padres. Once again, Manus comes in to slam the door.
you by Petco, the power of together. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Chess Hall of Fame here in St. Louis. In Very many ways, nice. it applies to baseball in the National League at least because it is a chess game between the two managers trying to study the moves of the opposition, be ready with a winning move. Hey, you got to protect that queen, right? Always got to protect the queen. Don't bring it out too early. A.J. Brzezinski, the catcher, leads off the bottom of the eighth inning. Boyer continues into a second inning of relief. Brzezinski has grounded out twice and fly to left. A good catch made by Seth Smith. One and one. Brzezinski, J. and Robinson here in the last of the eighth inning. Be interesting to see who comes in to pitch the ninth for St. Louis. You know, I think it's going to be Nishek probably. Because yeah. usually he's the eighth inning guy for St. Louis. And with the troubles Rosenthal had last night, and there he is, the yeah. bearded one, Nishek, getting hot. He has been unbelievably yeah. good. And so wonder that he isn't the closer. Mm -hmm. The numbers on him this year are non parel in the National League. No well, Boyer in the last inning retired the side in order, but Adams and Peralta hit shots to the outfield. Adams lining out to right and Peralta to left. Two and two. And the count runs out. Quite a career, Brzezinski. Always been a tough out. Over 1,750 games. Slices that one out of play. Yeah, you get up into those numbers as a catcher, you're doing something right. It's more games of any active catcher. And the night will end splendidly for that fan. 169 home runs. More extra base hits than any active catcher. And more runners caught stealing than any active catcher. So. And he's done a little post game uh, or uh, postseason work on TV as well as an analyst. Uh, yeah. And out of the uniform, always, always a good gabber. Oh, yeah. Fouled at the plate. Remains alive. Well, look ahead to the ninth inning for the Padres with a score of 3 1. Scheduled Rivera, Amarista, and the pitcher Boyer. Base hit to center field for Prasinski. It was a good battle. The sixth hit of the night for the Cardinals. Brings up John Jay. And a look ahead to tomorrow's pitching matchup. Jesse Hahn, solid seven and three. Draws Shelby Miller. Miller is eight and nine, but is the RA up there? 4.17. Four o'clock. Time on the Pacific Coast for the second game of the Fox doubleheader. And then on Sunday, we'll be with you at 10.30 for the final game of this four-game series. Despagne for San Diego against the star of the Cardinals staff, Adam Wainwright, who is 14 and 7. John Jay hit twice in the leg by pitches from Tyson Ross. Second time almost took one for the team. Didn't really try very hard to get out of the way. The first time he got punked up pretty solidly, and that led to the third run of the game. In case you're just joining us, all three Cardinal runs by runners that were put on base by Ross, two by walks, and the other, the hit batsman, came around to score. 
93 on the fastball from Boyer. Yeah, a little giddy up there on the four seam fastball on the inside part of the plate. Free and easy delivery ball jumping out of the hand. Isn't that Andy Ashby's uh, call? Free and easy. <laughs> Andy Ashby in studio. Stay tuned after the Potters come back and win this one. Mike Pomerantz and Andy Ashby going to break it down. That line to left for a base hit. John Jay moves Kuzinski to second with a solid single. So the first two Cardinals aboard here in the eighth inning as they try to apply some insurance to the 3 1 advantage. Well, a good battle by A.J. Pierzynski, a nine pitch at bat. He singles, and John Jay here, he fights one off inner part of the plate, quick to the baseball. And because it's up in the zone a little bit, just dumps it over the shortstop's head. No chance for Alexi in front of Venable and Smith in left center field. So, with two men on, Shane Robinson, the batter in the Padres, uh, check on their defensive alignment, looking for the sacrifice. Robinson 0 for 3, three ground outs, but remember he was denied a double the last time up on a terrific play by Jace Peterson diving behind the bag of third to throw him out with a couple of men aboard. Wet grass, so yep. anything bunted into that moist turf could be uh, tough to handle. And strike one. Looks like Oscar Tavares, is that him on deck? Yep. He's been bench. He's in the doghouse right now, the young Tavares. He didn't run out a couple of balls on the last road trip. He squares. Throw to third, and they get him. A late slide and uh, Perzinski makes a base running error. Is on a very short pass ball. He tries to advance. And now what? Here the umpires are looking at one another, gesturing. Well, Tom Payne, John Tom Payne has indicated Perzinski is out. He pointed. I want to know if they offered at the last pitch, probably. The hitter. Well, that changes the complexion of the inning, doesn't it? Ball gets away. Rivera just flips the ball down to third, and Przinsky with. Yeah, he's out. I think they were wondering if uh, Robinson offered at that pitch. Well, that's a break for the Padres to go from two on no one out to an out and a runner at first base. I guess you'd call that caught stealing two five. So Robinson now up, not up there to bun. He's going to be swinging. Now he pulls the bat back. And Krasinski puzzles his manager by trying to go to third. Three one the Cardinals lead. We're in the last of the eighth inning. Padres uh, with the pitcher do third in the ninth inning. They have Jake Gobert. And Yasmani Grandal on the bench. We don't know whether Solarte's uh, side injury. Is. Uh, healthy enough for him to bat. That's one gets away and uh, they advance to second base. John Jay. So getting a break on Brzezinski trying to advance on a short pass ball and now a wild pitch or a short wild pitch. Boyer moves Jay into scoring position with this one. Oh, I'm guessing that that's got to be pass ball, don't you think, after a second look? Looked like Rene Rivera just kind of couldn't come up with it. If the ball hits the dirt, though, it's an automatic wild pitch. At least that's in the official scores book. Line to left field, but it's carrying, and Smith is there for the catch. Two away. Inordinate number of line drive outs in this game. 
in just the last three innings. One, two, three, four, five line outs to the outfield off the bats of the Cardinals. That's five hang with them. Right? Now, Darren Ballsy out to have a chat with Blaine Boyer with Tavares being announced. Scouting report. Refresher course. The pitch on which Jay advanced is called a wild pitch. Dale Thayer, just in case, slowly getting ready. Tavares, a highly touted rookie outfielder, they think he has a great future. But he's had trouble hitting here on his first visit to the major leagues, and it's impacted his hustle, and that's inexcusable. So they bench him for a couple of games trying to awaken his spirit. I think Blaine Boyer uh, getting a tongue depressor. That play is really caked yeah. in the spikes. You know what surprise they don't have here in St. Louis is one of those egg, egg crates. Those egg, uh, oh there it is. Yeah. It's, it's got so much muck on it, you can't see it from here. So Tavera steps in, just 141 at bats, hitting 206, a couple of home runs. But he is to the Cardinals what Reimer Liriano is to the Padres. Great potential. Right one. Up the middle and through to center field. Here comes Jay. That wild pitch put him in scoring position four to one as Tavares delivers. That's a big insurance run. Well, let's see where the pitch is. It's away. It's off the plate, but it's up a little bit. And Tavares likes to get extended. Little difficulty with some pitches in off the plate. He got that pitch there, hit it solidly on the ground to center field. Now the bullpen has been such a bright spot of this San Diego Padres season. To see a run scored is eye popping. They just don't allow many runs. That reflected, of course, in the, their lead after six innings, 43 and one on the season. Carpenter pops it up. Might be a play slicing into foul territory. Third baseman Nelson makes the catch, but the Cardinals add a run on a single, a wild pitch, and a two run pinch hit by Tavares.
Welcome back to Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Side armor comes in out of the bullpen. Look at those numbers. 54 games, 5 and 0 with an ERA of 0.72. He's allowed only four runs in 50 plus innings. Dick, the numbers are just eye popping. And uh, when you look at, I mean, it's a great story, first of all, for Pat Nieshek, the all star this year. He's got the funky delivery. You see the splits 143 for lefties, 120 for righties. Only six walks in 50 plus innings, 55 strikeouts in 15 a third. It's fabulous. Yeah, it sure is. He was with the Padres three years ago mm -hmm. for 25 games, just ordinary at the time, and was released. He said that he found that he was struggling. He was released. He was available uh, after spring training. Anyone could have claimed him or during spring training, and the Cardinals needed a, some help in the bullpen and selected him. Jake Gobert pinch hitting and sends that one out of play. And you said uh, what a what a story Nishek it was uh, chronicled around baseball and the fact that he his first son Gehrig named after Lou Gehrig Gehrig John only a day old and just suddenly died that it was the happiest time of his life and then the saddest he and his wife uh, have had a second child also named after a baseball player Hoyt <laughs> and the uh, the bonding between husband and wife and the tragedy of losing a baby after just one day and rebounding and it's uh, symbolic of his life as a pitcher got to root for those Absolutely. The, you know what? Getting to know Pat a little bit back in 2011 when he was a Padre. Nubbed out in front of the plate. Nishek is going to make the play, and Gobert is out. And time now to introduce our Carl's Jr. star of the game. Starter Lance Lynn goes six innings, allows one run and six hits. He struck out six, walked only one. Lynn, a couple outs away from logging his 13th win of the season. Lance Lynn, our Carl Jr. star of the game. Sample of his six punch outs. The 27 year old from Indiana. Alexi Amarista. 0 for 3 tonight. But a very unorthodox delivery from Pat Nishek as. Yes, Monte Grandal is swinging a Shalili on deck. Yeah, he threw it like that with the Padres. Mm -hmm. Just uh, had an average season. But throwing harder now, 91 miles an hour. He was down in the high 80s and wasn't getting the job done, so he's concentrating on building up his velocity and really paying off. He's one of the bullpen stars in the National League. Left field and playable holiday. Two away. Yasmani Grandal hitting for Blaine Boyer. Four o'clock tomorrow on Fox Sports One, the second game of the doubleheader. Jesse Hahn against Shelby Miller, the third of this four game series. Good outing for Jesse Hahn. He's got that fastball location and that curveball working tomorrow against the Cardinals. 42,662 on a damp night in St. Louis. We're rooting for another Cardinal win. They're just two games out of first place at the start tonight. Out of play. They 
got a good start from John Lackey last night. Lance Lynn tonight. They run out Shelby Miller and then Adam Wainwright in games three and four of the series. Two strikes and a high drive to deep center field. Grandall got a lot of that one and it is gone halfway up the bank. Grandall touches them all. Number 10 for the Padre switch hitter. Now that was about a 430 foot blast to straightaway mm -hmm. center. Makes it four to two. And how big is that run scored in the last of the eighth inning? The ball off the bat of ground down. There's a lot of oohs and ahs on this one. Watch him get extended. Belt buckle, full extension, outer half, and Yasmani knew it. And like you said, Dick, look where this one lands. Halfway up the lawn on the batter's eye. For Nishek, that's only the third home run he's given up this year in 51 innings. Well, the Padres need another base runner to bring the tying run to the plate. Four to two now. Nelson entered the game in the seventh inning and fly to center field. And the Padres one and one. If Nelson and successfully reach safely will Venable would be next. And now down to the final strike. 431 feet they measure the home run by Grandall. Padres ninth inning last night got to the Cardinal closer Trevor Rosenthal three hits and two walks but managed only one run from confusing calls by the umpire and they get a home run in the ninth inning off Nisha still alive two balls two strikes to Nelson. So that eighth spot in the batting order for the Padres producing both mm -hmm. runs. Jace Peterson a single and scored in the fifth inning on the double by Venable. And now the home run Grandall. Ball three. A full count to Nelson. Boy, a base runner plus top of the order for the Padres. Will Venable waits on deck. Hit well to left field. That chases Holiday back over his head against the wall. And Nelson will cruise into second base with a double. Just missed a home run as he tried to clear that barrier into the Padre bullpen. So a home run and a double, and the Padres continue to fight. Down to the final strike, they bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Will Venable. Well, remember last night against John Lackey, Nelson struck out in the third inning his first at bat, but I believe it was like a 13 pitch at bat. He battled. He battled big time. This is a battle against Nishek, who's got good numbers over the heart of the plate. That's the swing you like to see and the sound you like to hear on a mistake. Halfway up on the screen in left field. And Nelson with a double. Keeps it going. Padres trailing 4-2, two outs in the top of the ninth inning, and Will Venable with a RBI double back in the fifth inning. Tommy Medica on deck. Fouled at the plate. So with two outs, pinch hitter Yasmani Grandal homers deep center field, and Chris Nelson doubles off the left field fence. Keeping Padre hopes alive against Pat Nisha. Well, and again some, down to the final stretch. Taking some good hacks right there by Will Venable.
way outside as he threw him a changeup. Yep. One ball, two strikes to Venable. They put a dent in the Cardinal lead. It's four to two now. Oh, goes after a pitch outside. Another changeup. Venable strikes out. Ball game over. The Cardinals. 4-3 last night. Final score tonight, St. Louis 4, San Diego 2. As we go to Padres Live and Mike Pomerantz.